Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager with Autodesk. I want to show you how you can render an image while using Mental Ray Depth of Field to add a little bit of focus into your rendering. Depth of Field is an optic illusion that appears when looking at objects through a camera lens. The area within the depth of field appears sharp, while the areas in front or and beyond the depth of field appears blurry. Now there's a wealth of information about depth of field online and you might want to familiarize yourself with this effect as it applies to photography first before you can translate that into a 3D camera lens. To add depth of field in 3ds Max design, you will first need a camera because it's a camera effect. So I will create a camera from this perspective view and I will uh, show the safe frame of the camera to make sure I understand what is the view angle of this particular camera. Now I'm going to go and render this image without any depth of field so we have a comparison point. So this is the scene that I have now with a random selection of boxes and right now I don't have any depth of field. So all of the elements are at the same quality or sharpness. Under the control panel with the camera selected I'm gonna add depth of field mental ray or eye ray. So this is a depth of field that could be used with either mental ray rendering engine or eye ray and I'm gonna make sure that it is enabled. Now I can click the preview button, so this will allow me to see the depth of field within the viewport. So you see the front cube becomes a little blurry and then now I have depth of field. Now how do I know where my depth of field focal point is? Now this is driven from the camera target. So if I go into a top view, I could see my camera target is aiming at the fourth box. So if I go into a color view, it's aiming at this pink box here. So this is the box that is in focus and everything else is off focus, depending on the range that I'm using. Now the range is the F stop. So if you want a really shallow depth of field and the elements that are not in focus will be really blurry, then you can decrease the F stop value. So here under the control panel, I have access to the f-stop, which by default is set to 2.0. If I decrease that to a 0.5 value, you will see that the front box and the box behind the pink box, which are off focus, will become extremely blurry if I hit the preview button. This means I have a very shallow depth of field. Now the opposite is also true. If I increase the f-stop value by 5, I have a very deep depth of field. Therefore, most elements are in focus. So let's render a few images here so we see it in the rendered value. So here I have a very shallow depth of field of 0.5 and you see that my pink box is in focus. That's where my ta camera target is aiming and everything else is pretty much off focus due to the very shallow depth of field, uh, which is a f-stop of 0.5. Now, while keeping the f-stop value to 0.5, I'm actually going to change the camera target to be aiming at the red box, so the box closer to the camera, and re-render to see what I get. So now the camera target is pointing at the red box, and you see in the viewports that all the boxes in the background are becoming blurry, and this is exactly what I'm going to get in my render. So only the red box is in focus now, and due to the very shallow depth of field, even everything that is outside of my target, so the front of the red box is even off focus. This is because I have an extremely shallow depth of field of 0.5. It, if I don't want this value, I can increase the depth of field to 2.0, which is kind of a default value and something a little bit more normal. So I'm going to re-render that to have a comparison point. Now I have a depth of field that feels a little bit more natural. So the front box is in focus and the background boxes are off focus, but only a slight off focus because my depth of field has a little bit more depth f-stop value of 2.0. I'm going to use a f-stop of 1.5 and I'm going to change my camera target 
to be aiming at the background box, so somewhat like the blue box. So when I re-render that, you will see that um, now the front box will be off focus and the background box will be in focus. Now that you're getting the principle of depth of field, let's apply it to a more realistic scene. So first of all, I need to create a camera. I'm going to split my viewport into two views so I see the top view where I can adjust my camera target to be the focus of my depth of field. And I'm going to look at my uh, camera view as well. So right now the camera target is kind of in the middle of this car. I'm going to select my camera and in the control panel, I'm going to enable depth of field. Make sure that I select the mental ray, eye ray depth of field and I'm going to change um, I'm going to just it, it preview now so you see it in the viewport. Of course, this is a much higher, um, the complexity of this scene is much higher. So the process of showing it the preview in the viewport is a bit slower. So I'm going to allow it a bit more time. And maybe to show it to you quickly, I'm going to just decrease the f-stop to 0.5. So you'll see the blurriness is starting to happen now in the front wheel as well as in the back of the car. So I'm going to change the target of my camera to be aiming at the car engine. So this is where my focus of my shot, I want my focus to be on the engine itself. And now you see the background of the car is starting to be off focus in the viewport and therefore looking blurry. So if I render this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now keep in mind that the precision of your depth of field will depend on the quality of your rendering. So right now I'm rendering with a slightly low quality in order to have a fast render. So the depth of field seems a little granular, but anyways, you still get the point. So my focus is, is on the uh, engine of the car where my camera target is and you know, even the front wheel, because I have a very uh, shallow depth of field at an F stop of 0.5. So the front wheel is off focus as well as the back of the of the car. So to have something a little bit more realistic, probably I would uh, render this image using an F stop of 2.0. So I have a slight blurriness in my depth of field. So let's just render a comparison here so we can look at it side by side. And here's the result. So the front image has a very shallow depth of field and therefore a lot of blurriness. And the other render has a more depth or deeper depth of field. And therefore there's only a slight blurriness happening. So depth of field is great to add focus into your render. So if you want the eye of the viewer to go into a particular area of the image that you're rendering, using depth of field will add that focus that you're looking for and will give you as well a more kind of photographic look of your rendering and therefore a little bit more uh, realistic or photorealistic quality.